and I've got to tell you, that's the hardest part, making sure you land in the right place, as it is with life, I guess. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is a big day for us, but it's often the small things that make a difference. This small but beautiful car will make a big difference. The electric EX30 is a big deal. It's a big deal for our customers, and it's a big deal for us at Volvo Cars. It's our smallest ever SUV, but it is no less of a Volvo. If anything, it's more. It's a distillation of everything that's good about Volvo, but in a smaller package. We like to say that small is mighty because it delivers on everything that you would expect from Volvo. Hello, Milan. I am Jackie Johnson, part of the communications team here at Volvo Cars. And today I have the pleasure of introducing you to the new fully electric Volvo EX30, along with some of our experts who helped create it. We'll look at its design, what it's like to live with the EX30. But first, I want to talk about one of our core stories and a starting point for any Volvo car, safety. So please welcome to the stage, Osa Hogland, head of Volvo Car Safety. Thank you, Jackie. Hi, Osa. Hi. So I want to start with a big question for you. This is Volvo's smallest SUV ever. How does it size up when it comes to safety? So we've approached this the same way we create any new Volvo car, drawing on decades of pioneering research and development. And for the EX30, we've squeezed every last drop of knowledge, innovation, and ingenuity from the cars that came before it and brought it into the development. So even if this is our smallest ever SUV, it still has all the safety you'd expect in a Volvo car, engineered to protect both the people inside as well as the world around it. So how do you squeeze big safety into a small car? I mean, the size must have a pretty big impact on the way that you've approached safety for the EX30. So it does. I mean, we do still play by the laws of physics. So we've had to work extra hard on protective safety to start with. Key to protecting people is the vehicle structure itself, what we call the safety cage. So underneath this beautiful exterior, there is an equally carefully designed steel armor protecting those inside from external forces. And in EX30, we've built it combining different strengths of steel and aluminum, depending on the protection needed in each area. But it doesn't stop with the safety cage. We've also used our extensive knowledge from real-world accidents and injuries throughout the entire interior design. And we've equipped the EX30 with state-of-the-art restraints such as a new airbag mounted inside the driver's seat. In this way, we make the most of every millimeter on the inside as well to protect driver and passengers in the event of an accident. And so this is an EV. What about protecting the battery? Yeah, you're right. So in the era of EVs, another key to safety is protecting the battery. So in EX30, we've given the battery its own safety cage by making the side structure extra stiff again using high-strength steel and aluminum in a combination. As well as protective safety, we know that Volvo also works to prevent accidents. So let's take a quick look at the EX30's active safety features. Have you ever heard of car dooring? It's when a cyclist collides with a car door that has opened unexpectedly. If you think this bike has seen better days, you should see the door. The rider was fine this time, but could a potential danger like this be averted with a small idea? In the Netherlands, they teach drivers to exit the car using the opposing arm, forcing them to turn around to see what's coming. They call it the Dutch method. So what's the Swedish method? Well, we asked ourselves, why only teach the driver when we can also teach the door? It turns out doors make pretty good students. They can now warn you if you start exiting the door with someone approaching from behind, whether Dutch or Swedish, if a small idea can save a life, it might just be a great one. Okay, Osa, how do you train a door? Well, car dooring does contribute to a significant number of fatal cycling accidents around the world. 
especially in urban areas where the EX, sorry, in, uh, rural, in city areas where the EX30 is so at home. So we gave the EX30 an extra pair of eyes in the rear bumper to cover that area that is otherwise quite obscured for drivers, passengers and doors. So as part of our safe space technology, these rear bumper sensors can detect a cyclist or another road user approaching from behind. And if it seems as if you're about to open the door into their path, the EX30 will warn you using audible and visual signaling. Yeah, so you mentioned the safe space technology. How does that help a driver who's, say, in the city? Well, in a city, we often find ourselves driving in busy built-up areas around schools or in parking areas. And even at low speeds, these situations can be quite stressful, as pedestrian cyclists and other road users may seemingly appear out of nowhere. So to help, the EX30 uses a three-way combination of sensors, ultrasonics, radars and cameras, to keep track of what you sometimes can't. And the EX30 then also knows when to support by braking for you, if needed. And are these sensors only active at low speeds? So the safe space technology is always along for the ride, keeping track of the world around you as well as other road users. And should the external sensors detect the risk of a collision, the car will alert the driver and can further mitigate a potential accident by advanced automatic braking or steering input. So we've talked about protecting people, we've talked about sensing the world around you. Did you know the EX30 looks out for the driver in even more ways? Do you have some examples? I do. So research shows us that driver fatigue and distractions are key contributors to a large percentage of the accidents that occur. And I believe a lot of us have experienced feeling really tired driving home after work, after a busy week, or being distracted by what's going on in life. So for these occasions, when the driving, your driving is not at your best, the EX30 is equipped with interior sensing that can act as a, an additional line of defense and alert you or guide you to a nearby rest stop should you need it. So these were a few examples of the big safety we squeezed into our smallest ever SUV, the EX30. Thank you so much, Elsa. Thank you. Now that we've wrapped up safety as a starting point for the EX30, I want to shift gears a little bit to talk about another core story for the SUV, sustainability. These jeans never stood a chance. Poorly made and ill-fitting, they suffered many rips, scuffs and stains at the hands of their uncaring owners. But do not pity them, for they were destined for something greater, to go from feeling blue to feeling beautiful. Were they ugly? Maybe. Even an insult to human legs, perhaps. But bursting at the seams with potential, bet your pants on it. You see, this hopeless pair of jeans was recycled, shredded, twisted, and remade into the premium denim deco of the Volvo EX30. A small step towards a much larger goal, helping make better use of our planet's valuable resources. What bigger statement could a pair of jeans make? So joining me now is Francesco Special, commercial head for the EX30. Hello, Jackie. Hey. Hello. So Francesco, clearly there's more to the EX30 than just an old pair of jeans. Tell us more about the larger goal. We know that Volvo Cars is aiming to be climate neutral by 2040. How will the EX30 help drive us there? Sure. So first of all, a smaller car means less material needed overall like uh, steel and aluminum, which are two of the biggest CO2 contributors in uh, a car production. Overall, by downsizing to a smaller car, we are reducing the carbon footprint before we even step into it. But size is not enough. It's a good start, but it's not enough. Okay, so we need to go beyond size. What are we talking about? By 2025, Volvo cars aim to reduce the overall carbon footprint per car by 40% compared to 2018 level. 40% is quite a lot. It is. 
And to do that, we need to drastically reduce emissions at in, in, in tailpipe, manufacturing, supply chain, raw material sourcing. It's an effort in every single step, from the first design sketches all the way until end of car's life. And the EX30 does this. In fact, if you take the EX30 compared to one of its siblings, like the fully electric XC40 or the C40, the EX30 reduces the carbon footprint by 25% compa compared to them, despite the car not being 25% smaller. So how have you done that? So we talked about downsizing before, right? And that's the first step. Downsizing, smaller size, less carbon impact. But what we have to do is that we need to use existing resources. We need to reuse what we already have in a smarter and more efficient way. We have worked really hard with the EX30 to reduce, to have the highest material utilization rate in a Volvo car ever. I want to pause there for a second. So material utilization rate, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so take for example a suit, right? When a tailor is, uh, making a, is cutting out the suit, there is always some offcuts, there is always some, some waste generated. The same goes into a car production. When you stamp out the pieces of original shit that goes into a car, there is always some waste. And that's why the highest material utilization rate translates into a reduction of waste, and therefore a reduction of uh, environmental impact in general. I got it. OK, and what about the recycled materials in the EX30? Can you give us some numbers there? Sure. So from interior to exterior, we have achieved 25% recycled aluminum, 17% of recycled steel, 17% of the EX30 recycled plastic. The EX30 has the highest recycled steel and recycled plastic of a Volvo ever. We have also increased our material traceability. With manganese and graphite now added to the list, we are tracing five critical raw materials that go into our cars, into our batteries, utilizing blockchain technology. And what about production and supply chain? How are they joining on this journey? It's another effort that we had to make, right? It's at, at the production process at every single step. We need to focus on lowering emission. The EX30, the EX30 manufacturing plant will run on 100% climate neutral electricity. And what's more is that 95% of our suppliers have committed to 100% renewable energy at production. And some of them are actually already there today. Yeah. OK, so we've talked about safety. We've now talked about sustainability. Let's now talk about the motors and the batteries. What are we looking at here? Fun part, right? So we have uh, two batteries with different chemistries and different benefits for our customers. On one hand, we have the LFP battery. The LFP battery utilizes lithium and iron phosphate chemistry. Uh, it's more cost effective and less resource intensive to produce. This has helped us to lower the entry price point for our consumers. So if you tend to have shorter distances between charges and mostly spend your time in the city, then the LFP with the single motor variant is ideal and economical. On the other end, we have the NMC battery. That battery combines lithium, uh, cobalt, nickel, and manganese chemistry, and it gives you more power and range in case you need it. Take that battery and combine it with a single motor or a twin motor to create the electric powertrain that fits your needs and lifestyle. For example, you can combine it with a single motor and that will deliver up to 480 kilometers range, which, uh, to give that number a context, is like driving from here to Bologna and then back again without any need of charging. I'm not going to pretend I know how far Bologna is from here, but I believe you, that sounds yes. meaningful. Um, and if it's performance that you're after? Well, if you want performance, then take the NMC battery and combine it with a twin, a twin motor to deliver up to 315 kilowatt, which translates into 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under 4 seconds. And to be exact, 3.6 seconds, making it the fastest accelerating Volvo ever. 
What's more is that the EX30 brakes can take you to standstill in under 38 meters. That's a lot of power. It's a lot of power. And what we have done is that we've worked with the chassis. We have tuned the chassis to the car's compact dimension. The, the car has a smooth and responsive drive with a low center of gravity to help you in whatever the journey takes you, whether it's countryside or city center. Yeah. I have one more question before I let you go. Yeah. How long will it take if I want to charge up and go? That depends on the battery as well. Uh, the charging capacity of the NMC battery is up to 153 kilowatt, while the charging capacity of the LFB battery is up to 134 kilowatt. That translates in around 26 minutes to charge your battery from 10 to 80 percent. Basically, the time that you sit down and enjoy a coffee, and I would say in this country, a couple of espresso, and then your EX30 is recharged and ready to go. What's more is that from wherever you are, with the EX30 app or inside the car, you can set the level of speed and the, spe the, the speed and level of charging whenever you want, allowing you to connect with the car wherever you are. That sounds pretty convenient. It is. The EX30 is designed to make life easier. And more so, it's designed to be truly at home in the city jungle protecting people outside, pr protecting people around it, and also reducing the impact on the planet. Because for us at Volvo, safety and sustainability, they are interlinked. And the EX30 helps showcase this. Thank you so much, Francesco. Grazie, Jackie. Thank you. From the big car energy, I now want to dive deeper into the ease and convenience that we just met, touched on by looking at what it's like to live with the EX30. So please welcome to the stage Anna Arasa, UX Design Manager, and Elwin Bacanez, Head of Software Engineering. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, so before we get into the details, Anna, We've heard that the EX30 is a concentration of the best of Volvo. How does this affect the way that people experience the car? This is a really big question, Jackie. So if the mission at Volvo is to give people the freedom to move, within UX, we work to make this movement safer, more convenient, and more enjoyable. We do that by selecting the right partners and also having the right technology. And as our cars become more connected over time, we aim to improve the EX30 experience over its lifetime. But already now, we are really proud of the user experience that we have achieved on the EX30. So let's talk about the single central screen. Why only one screen in this car? We have focused heavily on sustainability on the EX30. One free standing screen gives us the opportunity to save on material where we can, as well as on space. This allowed us to create a feeling of openness around the driver, which is really important in a smaller car. When it comes to the content of the screen itself, we have worked to give you the same big car experience that we have on our EX90. What do you mean by big car experience? An example is that we have Google built in, just like in our bigger cars. And if you are running low of battery, Google Maps will drive you to the nearest charging station, while you wait, you can browse through your favorite app on Google Play. And in the future, with Google Home, you will be able to queue your playlist to continue playing from the EX90, uh, from the EX30 to the comfort of your sofa. And Alwyn, did I just see Apple CarPlay on there? Yes, you did. So we've equipped the EX30 with wireless Apple CarPlay. So no matter what phone you have, you're, you can bring your favorite applications along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anna, let's get back to the screen. So talk us through the layout. Of course, Jackie. Okay. So at a first glance, we see driving speed, charge status, and drive support functionalities, all key driving uh, information at the line of sight. At the bottom, our contextual bar shows the most used functionality, and those depends on the situation. So you only see 360 camera at lower speeds and opening trunk at standstill. The larger screen allowed us to have more information shown to you. So we show you what media you're playing, as well as who is at the other end of the phone call. 
And if you are looking for true focus, we have introduced the con screen. In this con screen, we have stripped everything but the absolute essentials away. And Alwyn, talk to us about the tech behind this big car experience. Mm -hmm. The display is powered by, by the same ultra-fast Qualcomm processor as you will find in its larger sibling, the EX90. And the EX30 is also equipped with 5G connectivity. And these two things combined provide a really snappy experience, for example, when you're browsing songs on Spotify. Yeah. And when it comes to driving assistant functionalities, what are you most excited for our customers to experience? So my personal favorite is our updated Park Pilot Assist function. The, the system is designed to actually not just, it will help you find the parking spots, uh, but it doesn't only help you find the parking spot that you need. It actually helps you perform the park with you. So it brakes, it steers, it accelerates, and helps you complete the entire maneuver whilst keeping you informed on the central screen. So really what the system does is it helps you secure and leave that parking, perfect parking spot, no matter how hard it is. And that's actually not all. So the new pilot assist function also enables you to perform automated lane changes at the flick of an indicator switch. And if you at some point find yourself driving next to a large vehicle like a truck, it'll give you just a little bit more space to, feel, to make you feel more at, com at home on the, on the road. Yeah. And Anna, you an mentioned earlier that uh, Google can help you find a charging station, but what if you're not in the car yet? You can actually use the new Volvo EX30 application to search for charging stations even you, before you leave home. Through the app, you can also check the status of your car, from the charge level to the air quality inside, as well as start your pre and send your next destination to, st to start preparing for your next journey. And that's not all. You will be also able to access customer support as well as share your key with your friends and family. So sharing my key, I'm not just going to physically hand them my key? Without ha actually having to meet them, unless, of course, you want, you can share your digital key through the app to the mobile wallet of your friends and family. Each, each co-driver will have their own profile, from the seat positioning to the music they want to hear. So from the moment they open the EX30, it will remember them just the way they like it. And how does that work exactly? So for example, if you have a Spotify account, that will be safe under your profile. So your playlist will be there, ready to go. Yeah. I want to go back to the digital key for a second here, Alwyn. How does that work? So the only thing you have to do to unlock your car is basically take your phone, your compatible phone, and swipe it over the NFC reader, which is located between the front and rear doors. And if you want to drive, you simply place the phone in the dedicated space in the center console. What if my battery has just died on my phone? So if your battery has just died, you don't have to worry, because the NFC, re NFC reader will still work, so you can still unlock the car. But that's actually not all. The car is also equipped with six ultra-wideband antennas, and that, helps, that can sense you from about 10 meters away through your mobile phone or a wearable device. So when you approach the vehicle, it actually meets you with a welcome sequence, it unlocks the, the car, so you can simply get in, put your seatbelt on, select your gear, and you're ready to go. Sounds like a pretty smooth experience. What about when it comes to updates for the EX30? Is it just as smooth? It is. So as every other Volvo car, the EX30 supports over-the-air updates. And that means that the car is only designed to get better over time. So you can download new software, you can install applications, just like on your smartphone. It's, it's really quite easy. And because the car has 5G connectivity, this is now also going really fast. And that means that we have a lot of interesting new functionality coming to the car in the not-so-distant future. Sounds like it's packed with technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, both. Thank, Thank you. you. From a close-up of the central display, I now want to take a step back and look at the holistic design of the EX30. So please welcome to the stage T. John Mayer, Head of Exterior Design. Hi. So, T. John, I've heard that the EX30 is described as an espresso shot of Volvo, intense and essential. Tell us why. Well, the EX30 distills our design values and principles into a smaller, more concentrated package. So its long wheelbase and large wheels and equally short overhangs 
help bring balance and refinement to the exterior design. And with a fully electric platform, this gives us the opportunity to create a feeling of space beyond its size. The Volvo EX30 has also been described as the little sibling to our Volvo EX90. How have you developed its character? Well, through the use of a color, texture, and materials, we've added an extra visual punch. So, really, when we, as designers, we take inspiration from the world around us, usually nature, architecture, product design, graphic design, even pop culture. But in the instance of the EX30, we referenced sci-fi helmet design from the film and movie industry. This helped us to create the fully electric closed shield on the front end of the EX30, a very creative and playful expression. And this dynamic composition is all topped off with EX30's unique rendition of our lighting signature in Thor's hammer. It certainly sounds full of character, T. John. But what if I want a little bit more? Well, this car has a lot of character, but if you want to dial that up to the max, I'd like to introduce you all to the EX30 Cross Country. So we've pumped it up. It rides higher off the road on bigger wheels, and we've added matte black detailing around the car, front, side, rear, and around the wheel arches to add more protection for your outdoor adventures. One of my favorite parts is the addition of the optional roof rack that we have on the EX30 Cross Country. It brings even more versatility for your outdoor adventures. Let's talk a little bit about the exterior design process here. For the exterior design process, we follow form language of um, Scandinavian design principles and really form following function. Now that term is usually commonly referred to as a physical interaction or a function of an element. But there's also the aspect of visual and emotional function. So to start our process in the EX30, we start with a solid monolithic mass or volume. We then carve away areas to create shapes that subconsciously suggest solidity and safety. So it's really starting with that solid mass where you show thickness of material, like it's one solid form, and this really conveys visual safety by design. Yeah. And what about the details? Well, every detail serves a purpose. For example, in the front cr contrasting band that visually stretches the width of the car, this houses many of the safety sensors throughout the car, as also talked about earlier today. At the end of that band, we have an architectural bridge between the lower and the hammer, and that's called an air curtain. Now, this enables the air to flow around such a short front end and improve the aerodynamic and range for our customers. Yeah. Let's step inside the EX30 now. Talk to us about the interior design. Well, we use a theme of centralization, where we combine multiple features to create an interior that's smart, spacious, and material efficient as possible. So we've heard from Anna and Alwyn earlier about the single centralized touchscreen. We work with this theme and also centralize the window switches from their outer position in the doors where they're normally located into the center console. And devised a multifunctional purpose center console that's clever and smart. The other thing that we've centralized is the glove box. So we've taken that from its traditional location in front of the passenger of the car and moved it into the center. Because how many times as a driver do you have to kind of awkwardly reach across the car to maybe find that parking ticket you forgot to pay? Now we've centralized that in the middle, so it's equally accessible to both the passenger and driver. Yeah. And what about the sound experience in it? Well, for the sound experience, we are influenced by home theater and audio design. We've taken most of the speakers throughout the car, combined them into one sound bar in the front. This, together with the air vents, is combined and hangs off the instrument panel. This really provides us th、um, the ability to open up the space and add extra storage, especially in the lower front doors. Yeah, and it looks like there's some interesting stuff happening here in the center console. Talk to us a bit more about the storage. Well, the center console is really smart. It's multifunction and multi-storage. So, for instance, we have a cup holder system. It can remain closed and out of the way, but you can choose a single cup holder position or click it to come out to a double cup holder. There's even a spot for your phone in front. If you need to wirelessly charge your phone, you can just place it down in the lower underneath that glove box. Now, with electrification, there's no need for a drivetrain that goes through the center of the car. So we've really opened up that space to add extra storage underneath the cup holders, and to top that off, or actually underneath, we have concealed storage for precious items or valuables, for instance, that you want to conceal when you leave the car, or even sunglasses that you want extra protection. Yeah, 
And did I just see some extra storage there behind the seats? Is that a smartphone pocket? Yep, clever, good catch. <laughs> um, yeah, so in what we call a map pocket from the past, where you used to house around or drag around uh, your large atlases or physical maps, you know, smartphones are our, our primary use of finding people in places. So we've integrated a smartphone-sized pocket into that seat back uh, to beautifully hold your phone so it doesn't rattle around in a big map pocket. Yeah. And when it comes to design choices, what can our customers expect? Well, from an exterior standpoint, we offer five colors. We have crystal white and cloud blue, as we see here on stage. We also offer onyx black, vapor gray, and quite a new color for us in moss yellow. Now, this color was inspired by the lichen that grow on the rock, rocks along the west coast of the Bohuslan in Sweden. Yeah, that's quite a bold choice. It's all about adding, adding that extra visual punch for the EX30. Yeah. And what about the interior design choices? Well, for the interior, we have what we call rooms. Now, a room is a fully curated combination of color, material, and surface finish. And together, those add different expressions throughout the car. We have two rooms that are focused on a natural set of materials. And we have two other rooms that focus on a recycled set of materials. Talk to us about the recycled rooms. Well, the recycled rooms of Indigo and Breeze. First, we'll start with Indigo, which is a, a dark blue room. And this uses the recycling process of denim jeans. So using the waste, recycling it, and using it to create our beautiful denim deco. For Breeze, we focused on recycling plastics throughout the deco and the seat the 3D, seat knit, uh, 3D knitted seat upholstery. We use a version of 3D knit in the EX30 called pixel knit. And that actually is a process that eliminates the leftover waste altogether. Yeah. And what about the natural rooms? For the natural rooms of mist and pine, we focus on our signature wool blend seats and a flax material on the deco and doors. Now, the flax fiber composite was developed by B-Comp, which is a startup company backed by the Volvo Tech Fund. Flax is a byproduct of the linen plant, so it's, usually, it's grown in between food crops, and it's usually a waste product. Here in the EX30, it finds its beautiful new purpose. Yeah, so it sounds like whether you, whatever you choose, it's a colorful expression. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and what, T. John, are you most excited for our customers to experience? Well, I don't think we could introduce a new Volvo without talking about Scandinavian light and design. So for me, one of the most enjoyable experiences is the nighttime ambient illumination themes. So the ambient illumination themes are a mixture of a color that has a subtle, subtle movement as you drive, paired together with an optional soundscape that goes together with that theme, all around the purpose of creating a calming and immersive experience. Can you talk us through the individual themes? Yeah, we'll see some up here. The first theme that you see is Archipelago. So this is inspired by the sunset that's setting over the beautiful west coast, Bohuslan, in Sweden. The second theme that we have is Midsummer. So this is a more of a golden theme, and it the, goes to the name Midsummer, probably one of the most important holidays in Sweden as we spend very dark, long winters. We celebrate that abundance of light with family and friends in the countryside. The third theme is called Northern Lights. So during those dark, cold winters, we have nature's most magical light show of Northern Lights. There are two other themes, but I'll leave you guys all to discover those on your own. So through ambient illumination, combined with fully curated interiors and a beautiful, powerful exterior, this all helps to create a small but mighty cocoon in the EX30. It's all to help you escape your busy daily life, whether that's on your commute or weekend adventure, the EX30 is our smallest and mightiest SUV ever. Thank you so much, Tijan. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Thanks once again to all of our experts for joining me and for all of you joining us here today.